Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out Sleepless in Seattle and I chose this movie because I woke up today and I was like I feel like watching a Tom Hanks movie and I've seen quite a few Tom Hanks movies but this is not one of them. I think I have not seen this one and Terminal. I was like some of his bigger movies and then I haven't seen a lot of his older movies as well when he was more of a comedian because uh, I know he was more of a comedian I think and then he turned into more of a drama actor so um, I have not seen any of his really comedic movies his older movies but I have not seen this movie so I woke up today I was in the Tom Hanks mood I was really craving Tom Hanks I think I was going to watch Maverick today but I'll save that for another day I just woke up didn't really feel like watching an action movie and I was like I kind of feel like watching a Tom Hanks movie so that is the only thing I know about this movie I'm assuming it takes place in Seattle been to Seattle a couple of times, really like the city, I think it's a great city, but yeah, all I know is Tom Hanks is in this movie and it takes place in Seattle and maybe someone cannot sleep. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know why it's called Sleepless in Seattle, maybe it's like they just stay up all night because they're in love with each other or something. I don't really know the plot to this movie at all, I'm just expecting a really wonderful time, a really emotional time. Um, I just like Tom Hanks. I think he's a great actor. Whenever he's in something, it's really emotional because of just his acting prowess, I guess. I don't really know. And he just makes everything so much better because he's Tom Hanks. So I'm really, really excited to get into this movie. Also, my puppy Huxley. She's in the video today. She was not in the Tremors video because she was too scared of the sandworms to come sleep, like to come sleep on my bed. But today she has joined me for at least the start of the movie we hope maybe she won't get make it through the intro but she is here everyone can wave hi if she if you'd like she really appreciates the attention she is a very much an attention hog so that is something we are working on with her she's going to therapy and stuff for that it is it's, it's so fine anyways let's just dive into the movie i'm really really excited to get into it so without further ado i hope you enjoy my reaction to sleepless in seattle Chicago. Wait, this isn't Seattle. Man, the movie's already starting off sad. The kid's standing there looking at his parent who passed away, his mom that passed away, and then Tom Hanks' monologue. Tom Hanks' monologues are always emotional. And he only said like four lines. My boy, five minutes. It's the guy from Titanic, the ship guy. Don't mind him, he's just a guy who's lost his wife. <laughs> that was a good line. That was a good line. What I think we really need is... I like change. his bow tie. Good idea. Yeah, you gotta move the city. Move on, right, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. And then in a few months, boom, I'll be fine. I'll just grow a new heart. Sam, so I'm sorry. Mean, I know. No, the thing is, he'll never be fine over it, but he just has to learn to cope with it, you know? It's still the same old story, a fight for love and glory. I like what the song said, it's still the same old story. I wonder what they're going to do differently to this age-old story that will make it different than the rest. My father has electric trains. Really? Am I what they had in mind? Oh, Walter, they're gonna love you. Oh, Walter, I don't love you. <laughs> I'm just joking, Walter, you haven't done anything wrong. You're really trying to, uh, to make your family happy. Walter, are you okay? If he eats even one tiny piece of a nut. My head swells up like a watermelon and I drop dead. It's the same with Harold and Bees. Your mother and I had... What does it matter about Harold and Bees? This isn't about Harold. Oh, he's not allergic to I don't salmon. think. But you never know. You never know. Harold wasn't always allergic to bees. Oh, oh my god, shut up about Harold. Oh, have to be in the garden? I, uh, well, what about Harold and Bees? I'm allergic to bees. Well, <laughs> <spray. laughs> oh, salmon. Okay, okay, it's kind of funny, though. They're kind of funny. <laughs> Everyone, please eat before it gets cold. 
Here. Harold, like touching the wine with his finger and checking it. <laughs> Is he looking for bees? Of course he was allergic to. And I got his lettuce and tomato on white. How amazing. It is, isn't it? You make a what an amazing story, Annie. Nothing, and then one day you want Actually, to take out the it is really cool. Destiny takes yeah. a hand. Um, destiny. Little stuff like that is actually really cool. I really like that stuff. He wasn't even supposed to work that night, and suppose he hadn't. <laughs> he asked me to take a midnight walk on the steel pier. I've probably Aww. told you this. Oh, I hope they do that, Tom Hanks and Annie. You know. What? Magic. She hasn't, she hasn't felt that with Walter, has she? And that everything would be wonderful. Just the way you feel about Walter. Walter. Oh, she doesn't. Oh, she doesn't. It's a sign. You don't believe in signs. <laughs> I love the mom. You don't believe in signs. They loved you. I Dude, if she sees that as a, as a sign to not get married, she doesn't want to marry Walter. And also, she has not felt that magical connection that her mom felt. No, no don't wait, Walter. Really, it's silly. You go ahead. We're late anyway. I'll be she 10 minutes behind you. She doesn't want to be with Walter. Sleigh bell tingling, ring ting ting. Annie, what are, you, what are you up to? Walter doesn't have the energy that Annie has, you know? Yes, Annie, hit those notes. Hello. Jonah. No last names, Jonah. You, you sound younger than our usual callers. How old are you? Huh. I'm eight. Is it about Tom Hanks? Oh, I'm so oh. sorry to hear that. Well, who can believe this? I've been pretty sad, but I think my dad's worse. Have you talked to your dad? Oh, this kid is so cute, Jonah, man. I'm never going to listen to your show again. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> dad? Yeah. I'm never gonna listen to your show again. I love this kid so much. Are on the air. You called a radio station? Sam. Sam. Sam, are you with me? Yeah. Yes. Your son feels that since your wife's death, you've been. <laughs> I love Tom Hanks. Sam. Talk to her, Dad. She's a doctor. Of what? Her first name could be Doctor. Please. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam. Tom Hanks with the lines. Room. Oh, and I don't want to invade your privacy. Oh, sure, sure you, you do. do. Go on. Look at them, they're connected. Sam. <clears throat> she loves him already. She loves him already. Look, it's Christmas. I like this shot. Uh, this is a good Maggie. shot. This is a really nice shot. People who truly loved once are far more likely to love again. Sam. Do you think that there's someone out there you could love as much as your wife? Yeah, Annie. Think about how I had it great and perfect for a while. Sam, tell me what was so special about your wife. Well, how long is your program? <laughs> Days. I just meant that we were supposed to be together. And I knew it. And I knew it the very first time I touched her. Just like the mom. Just like the mom. Well, folks, it's time to wrap it up. I'm Dr. Marsha Fieldstone in Chicago. One person who's missing the feeling of magic and one person who's never had the feeling of magic. We hope you'll call again soon and let us know how it's going. Oh, you count on it. That was such a good sequence. That was such a good sequence. I was so emotional. Tom Hanks killed it. And Annie... I forgot the name of the actress, sorry. She killed it. Annie, you leave Baltimore. You you gotta go to Seattle, man. Christmas Eve, when some kid calls a phone-in radio show and says that his dad needs a new wife. 2,000 women call the station asking for the guy's number. Jesus. 2,000 women. Oh, yes, the Polaroid commercial. Two five-year-olds at their grandfather's birthday party. They're making the album. Oh, with all the glow. That kills me. <laughs> <laughs> you should write something about this. About what? Whatever it is. About the story. That means she's got to go visit him. The guy could be a crackhead, a transvestite, a flasher, a junkie, a chainsaw murderer, or someone really sick. Someone like my Rick. Someone like my Rick. Oh, what was that? Hmm. What could Walter do that was funny? He seems kind of 
amazingly boring. Dude, what if they kiss on New Year's, like the next New Year's, Tom Hanks and Annie? What if they, what if they did it? What if they kissed? Like in Harry Met Sally, when he runs in, or she runs in, or someone runs into the New Year's party, and then they kiss. Sorry, spoilers for Harry Met Sally. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I feel like his son is the only thing keeping him growing, going at this point. They were playing Monopoly together. That's cute. Can I have half your beer? Sure, go ahead. Oh. I like this movie so far. I really like this movie so far. Oh, nice. When a man can express his feelings. It's wonderful. Yeah, I wish I could express my feelings. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Claire, is there a problem? I wish I could. You can do that. You can express your feelings, my guy. Drinking a glass of water from the other side. I thought that was for hiccups. Does it work for hiccups? For hiccups, take a spoonful of sugar and hold it in your mouth for a minute. Really? Aw, the mailman. The mailman was trying to help, and then... He was in awe of the kids' knowledge. That was cool. I live in Tulsa. Where's that? It's in Oklahoma. Do you know where Oklahoma is? Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's me. Aren't you going to read any of these? No, because this is not how it's done. I'd much rather just see somebody I like. This is like online dating. <laughs> this is like online dating, but when... The online was not that common. It doesn't. They ask you. I'm starting to notice that. If you get a new wife, I'll guess you have sex with her, huh? <laughs> this kid is very open. In the movies, women are always scratching up the men's back and screaming and stuff when they're having sex. How do you know this? Jed's got cable. Oh, just. Oh, just go. Okay. Tom Hanks is a good dad. <laughs> Annie, you're not happy. You gotta go to Seattle. I'm actually very impressed by this movie. The two characters that are probably gonna get together have not met each other yet, and we're probably about half, like 30 minutes into the movie. He says he doesn't love me anymore. Why would you want to be with someone who doesn't love you? Disappointed in Denver. Every time. Sleepless in Seattle will be next. I was just taking her hand to help her out of a car. It was like magic. magic. It was like magic. Dude, the camera work in this movie is really good. It lets the actors act. It is subtle and it lingers on actors and it lets them act. And that is why it is so good. Who lives in Seattle? It rains nine months of the year in Seattle. I know, I know. Who wants to move to Seattle? I want to know what it's like. You know, out there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. What women are looking for. Pecs and a cute butt. Well, you... Pecs and a cute butt. Not bad. Really? Yeah. Is it cute, though? Mm, I, I don't know. Are we grading on the curve? <laughs> When's the last time you were up? <laughs> I like this guy a lot. Well, what is it? You'll see. Some woman is going to want me to like do it to her. The I'm dessert? Not gonna know what it is. You'll love it. Oh, this is going to be tough. It's a dessert. Tough. Isn't it? Well, it is a dessert, but is he meaning something else? Think Cary Grant. Cary Grant Think would Cary call Grant. up and say, come over and Hello. look at my swatches. How do you know? Maybe he... <laughs> Wait, I, Gunga Din? He didn't call, call no, up No, Gunga Din? Din is not a, a swatch kind of movie. Wow. But do I, I don't know the script is pretty good for this movie, too. Like, the way that the actors or the characters talk to each other, it's very realistic. That's why it's really good. A lot of overlap and dialogue. Hey, Jonah! Is Annie going to be here, maybe? Hey, Jonah! Oh my god. Mm. 
See if Jonah can find love, you can find love. Back in the saddle again. Ride Call her a number. Fall in love. Toten. Come look at my swatches. <laughs> He's gonna say that, isn't he? Oh, Friday would be great, yeah, yeah. How? I, I hear that's a good place. Uh, she seems excited. She's like offering up ideas. At uh, 7.30 for dinner. Great. <laughs> Me too. Bye. Back in the she just took control of it all though, but look how happy he is. But also that must have been so exhausting for him. You're a basket case. They knew it. Time, distance, nothing could separate them because they knew it was right, it was real, it was a movie. Maybe they're not going to get That's together. That's your problem. You don't want to... Maybe Annie and Sam, I think is Tom Hanks' name, are not going to get together. Man is my destiny and I never meet him. Your destiny can be your doom. Look at me and Rick. Will you name the I want to meet... Look at me and Rick. I love her too. All the characters are good. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Winter must be cold for those with no warm memories. <laughs> Two emotional wrecks sitting on the couch. She could peel an apple in one long curly strip. Who else did that in this movie? Who else did that in this movie? Annie. I got chills when he said that for some reason. I don't know why. I just did. I love you, John. There is so much heart in this movie. There is so much heart in this movie. Anna, you gotta leave Walter, man. Two people looking up at the same sky, walking, thinking, sitting, two lost souls. Is she going to visit all of the Samuel Baldwins? Claire now I left the number of the restaurant where I'm going to be at. If there's any problem, here's the number of the pediatrician. It's right above the phone. Now here's a bottle of Ipecac. If anybody drinks poison, it's right here next to the juice. Oh my God, I love it. Before, but there's like 26 states between here and there. Now that's a sign. I'm out of here. Goodbye. Good night. I love you. Goodbye. Good night. I love you. I love it. I'll have a white wine spritzer. Yeah. And you, sir? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Hi. Hi. You, you look good. I feel like her and Derek are a thing. What? Annie Reed from Baltimore wants to meet us at the top of the Empire State Building on Valentine's Day. Like in the movie. I wonder what movie that was. Hey, hey, hey. Annie, you're kind of a stalker. Hi, Sam. Thanks. And let me guess, you must be Jonah. Hi. So the I love Jonah. Well, I could give her a call. No, 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 I've got it solved. I'm just gonna hit her with one of those fireplaces. <laughs> Jonah wants Annie. Jonah wants her laugh. Her laugh is kind of like Janice's laugh. Well, hey, 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 don't you want to thank Victoria for this delicious dinner? Thanks for dinner. I never saw anybody cook potatoes that way. Oh my God. Jonah, you need to get Annie here quick. You gotta fly her over. You gotta fly her over. <sighs> Walter seems so boring. The judge of whether someone is right or wrong for him. He's not sane enough to judge anything. Now he's kissing her on the lips. She's a hoe. My dad's been captured by a hoe. What am I going? <laughs> She's a hoe. She's a hoe. My dad's been captured by a hoe. <laughs> that was the best line. In the broom closet with the radio. Walter, you scared me. Don't Jonah is a god to this world. A menace, but a god. You scared Victoria to death. It was right over there. The next time you think you see a black widow spider, I want you to say, Dad. Oh, yeah. 
my new water bottle, it's like a chonkster. Where is the loop? That doesn't make any sense. I know, I know, Walter. It doesn't make any sense at all. Thank God my life is in place. I love that. Thank God my life is in place so confidently when it is so confidently not in place. You know, you shake them up and then the snow floats down? Sure, I'd really like that. Thank you so much. She is trying. She is trying. Maybe when I come back, the two of us ought to spend some time together on our own. What do you think? No. No. See, he didn't answer, so he, he was saying no in his mind. Nobody's perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect... Yes! Love at first sight, maybe? There's no such thing as a... Oh, I love it so much. I love it so much. Together, the puzzle's complete. God damn it. The reason I know this and you don't is because I'm younger and pure, so I'm more in touch with cosmic forces. <laughs> you have to be home. Oh, he just left. No. No, Sam. Get back to your house. Ah, oh, this is so cute. <laughs> Good. Goodbye. Back. What? Is this crazy? Can you please break up with Walter first? I'm so excited. Let's go, Annie. Let's go, Annie. Talk to my man, Sam. What if she just got run over by a car? <laughs> End of the movie. Oh, he likes Victoria now. She's she took too long. She took too long. Where's Greg? Oh, oh. That's not Victoria. That's not Victoria, is it? That's not Victoria, is it? I'm dumb. Yes. Hello. Hello. Look at how awesome this is. No! You know that dream when you're walking down the street naked and everyone is looking at you? I love that dream. Why did she leave? All I could say was hello. Oh my god. You're in love. All I could say was hello. Well, it's her, and he was crazy about her. What's this? This is from Seattle. You're gonna have to fly back. You just... You should've stayed. You should've stayed. It's like a little clue. Ah! So he can't write. Big deal. No, it was the kid. It was the kid. If he'll still have me. What about the letter? It means nothing. It was written before I went out there. Before the hoe. Before the hoe, they both, Jonah and her both called her a hoe. Well, I mean, there's really just the one. Victoria. You don't like Victoria? She laughs like a hyena. She does, actually, like the hyenas in The Lion King. Ha 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 Like that. She's gonna meet him at the top of the Empire State Building. Only she got hit by a taxi. And he waited and waited. She got hit by what? A taxi? Like in this movie, when Annie almost got hit by a taxi. He said her, and he kind of just, they know, and then they hug, and it's, oh God. That's a chick's movie. That's a chick's movie. <laughs> I love Starve. No. It is easier to be killed by a terrorist than to find a husband after the That is morning. absolutely untrue. I love that that stat has come up twice now. Shiny help because he was the MP. <laughs> Please, come on. Oh, oh God, I love that movie. <laughs> this, this movie is really good. It's so funny. You have to find her, Jonah. You have to go to her. 
Do you know how much money it costs to go to New York? No. You know, okay, for a second, I thought that this was actually happening, and I was literally about to ask if I could have some popcorn. <laughs> like some of her popcorn in the movie. I hate Walter. No, I don't hate Walter. He hasn't done anything wrong. He's just not right for her. Forever. No. How can you not be nervous about that? How can you not be nervous about that? <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Eight is too few. Twelve is too, too many. many. She seems so bored. It's so beautiful. It's exactly what I would pick out if I had every ring in the whole world to choose from. You can just tell she's lying. That's the thing. Like her size in between words and stuff. She's doing a really good job at expressing that. Is this about that woman in Baltimore? Annie. This movie frustrates me. This movie frustrates me. They need to get together. How long have you been standing there? Forever. What did you hear me just say? Six girls in college, maybe seven. Seven? Eight! Mary <laughs> Kelly! This is the one. <laughs> seven. I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! That's good! You'll have a lot to tell Oprah how your dad destroyed your life because he had to go off for a weekend special at the Holiday Inn. Like, his argument makes sense, though. Like, why would you go to New York to see some random person you've never met? Like... Come on, she's kind of in the right. And what is she wearing? She's like a. She looks like a clown. Jonah. Jonah. Hey, Jonah. Clarice. Her, Clarice hurts my brain. N Y. What is that? No way. That's N W. N Y. She said the truth. The music kind of sounds like Monsters Inc. music. Whoa, the roof of the building is way bigger than I thought it was. What the heck? I thought it was just like a little square for some reason. Hi. What a view. Oh no, she's not on the Empire State Building. Of course she isn't. Ah. Walter, you're running out of time, my guy. It's not him, Walter. It's me. I can't do this. Yes. Yes, Walter. Yes, Walter. Or Annie. Sorry, Walter. But... Okay. <laughs> Walter is taking this so well, what the heck? His heart is breaking, but he also understands, what the heck? You okay? No. Yeah. No, he's not okay. Obviously, he's not okay. Walter, I feel for you, man. No. Huh. Huh. Oh. Cute Eddie. No, oh, man. And you gotta run. You gotta run, man. I have so many chills right now. You don't understand. I mean, maybe you do. You probably do. Hey, maybe when we get home, we'll get a dog. Okay. No! No! No, this does not happen. I like to have a dog? No, this does not happen. Don't you dare close those doors. Did he leave his backpack? What if he left his backpack? And he has to go back up to get his backpack. Oh my god. Please let me, please say that he left his backpack. Please say that the kid left his backpack. Yeah, he did. 
He did. He left his backpack. I left it by the telescopes. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. It's you. It's me. I saw you in the street. Are you Annie? Yes. Yes, she is Annie. And who's this? Howard. Oh, Howard. Hello, Howard. It's a good day for a bear. We grab some dinner, late night snack or something. I have so many chills. I have so many chills. Oh, there's so many chills. Yes, yes. Take his hand. The touch of a hand. Magic. It's like magic. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's perfect. Make just one someone happy. I'm so happy. We'll be happy too. And there's someone out there for everyone. The and that was really good. <laughs> that was kind of just what I wanted to watch. I wanted to watch a like a rom com, but I also wanted to watch a feel good movie with something at the end, like a feel good ending. And I also wanted to watch a Tom Hanks movie. And I got all three of my wishes. Today is a good day. And that was my reaction to Sleepless in Seattle, the 1993 romantic comedy starring Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan, Rita Wilson, and Ross Malinger. You know, I don't think Rita Wilson really starred in it too much. Uh, I think I would put that as, I don't know, Gabby Hoffman, I think, as Jessica, as Jonah's girlfriend. I think she was more of a star. Uh, or like Rosie O'Donnell, I feel like maybe. I think she was um, the girlfriend and his and his girlfriend. So I don't know. I think it may, mainly starred Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks, and Ross Malinger though. Anyways, that is not very important. I really enjoyed that movie. That movie, movie was just what I wanted to watch this morning when I woke up, I was in a rom-com mood, I was in a Tom Hanks mood, I was in a, mo a mood where I wanted to watch a movie with a really just happy, satisfying ending, and that is what I got. This movie was exactly what I wanted, and that is why I think I really, really, really enjoyed it. First, I'd like to look at the Rotten Tomatoes score and stuff, because whenever I look at the cast on Google, it just shows up. So I'd like to just briefly touch on it, because I think that looking at reviews is very interesting. So the IMDb score is a 6.8 out of 10 and that obviously is reviewed by audiences like just the general public. 6.8 out of 10 I feel like is a little bit low for this movie although it is a rom-com there are flaws with this movie it is a cheese fest so I can understand if people don't like it obviously I am really enjoying it I think I just gave it a 4 out of 5 stars so 6.8 is definitely low in my understanding of the movie and like how I interpret it but I mean I can understand rom-coms usually don't get the highest of ratings just because they're not for everyone and there's always kind of issues within them themselves and we'll talk about the issues with this movie in my review and obviously on Rotten Tomatoes 75% the critics seem to really like this movie I thought it was really good there were a lot of cool parallels and stuff and I think there's a lot of stuff that critics would like in this movie anyways moving on to the movie itself I'll talk about score first the score was pretty good there was some of the score that I didn't like too much like the little like dingling ding things I don't really know what it was saying but then when it was when it like smoothed over into the long violins and stuff I'm a sucker for violence so whenever there's like violins in a movie I will like the score <laughs> anyways or piano so whenever there's like like there's a, there was like a dingling ling thing that I didn't really like but I really like the the violin score and the song choices I thought were really good the song at the end I want to download like during the credits I thought that was good I also really appreciated the lack of music for certain sequences for quite a lot of sequences actually a lot of times when the camera was slowly zooming in or when there was a still shot and the actors were just talking to each other there wasn't music and I really really liked that it grounded me into the scene it made me really like it made me really emotional and it proved that the movie was actually emotional because the music wasn't being used to manipulate my emotions. The actors, the dialogue, 
the actions of the actors and the framing of the camera were being used to make me feel that way. So the music, because sometimes in movies, movies will trick you into making fe making you feel sad. The music choice, I know there's like a bunch of things where Pixar makes you, like tricks you into making you feel sad. But so like the music can change, like the music gets sad. So you get sad characters cry on screen, which makes you cry on screen and kind of adding all that up together kind of manipulates your brain to going, oh, I need to be sad. But in this movie, while there were characters crying on screen when the radio show was on, Annie was crying in the car, like, yes, that could be seen as a manipulation to get you to feel sad because Annie is feeling sad. There was no music. It was all just the radio show and the characters' emotions. And I think that is why I felt very emotional during those scenes, even though I barely knew the characters because of how well the scene was kind of put together, built together, and because it just felt more real and more grounded. I don't know, I thought that was really interesting. Another thing I really liked about this movie was the camera work. The camera work was really simple, really subtle, and really good. And the reason why I really liked the camera work, because usually I'm a fan of very flashy camera work. I love long takes. I love just nice, wide shots where you can see a lot of action, but obviously that's for action movies. This is a rom-com. It is harder to do an insane, crazy, camera work in a rom-com when you don't really have action. You just have characters walking around talking, but I think the camera work suited this movie really, really well because there were not a lot of cuts. There were not a lot of over the shoulders, over the shoulders, over the shoulders for conversation. The, the cameras were in different locations, sometimes high up, sometimes low, nice wide shots a lot of the times, and they were not short shots. It was not like wide shot, cut shot, over the shoulder, over the shoulder, medium shot, close up, you know, like lots of shots. It was very spread out, the cuts, and that really gave the actors a lot of time to move about, to feel the scene, to kind of get into the scene, and it made you feel invested in the scene because there weren't cuts, and so you were just kind of put there and watching these people like do their thing, you know, watching these people live their lives. So I really enjoyed it. There were some crazy, there were some really good shots, some really well-framed shots. The shot where, the, where Jonah and Sam were on the couch on the phone um, when they were talking to the radio show at the start of the movie, I really, really enjoyed that shot. There are also some really cool parallels in the movie. The parallel of rainy Seattle versus sunny Baltimore was just very aesthetically pleasing for me. I don't know. I just thought that was a really cool thing. I don't know if they meant to do it or didn't mean to do it. They obviously, they brought it up in the movie where someone's like, doesn't it rain like nine months of the year in Seattle or something like that? So I thought that was fun. I liked the parallels. I thought that was really cool. And going, moving into parallels, there are a lot of cool things in the script. And the script, I thought it was really funny that it reminded me a little bit of when Harry met Sally. I think I brought that up at one point during the movie. I don't think I brought up that it felt like it was Harry and, when Harry met Sally, but I brought up when Harry met Sally. I think that is funny because the director of this movie, Nora Ephron, she made, she or not she didn't make, but she wrote when Harry met Sally, or she at least helped write when Harry met Sally. So I thought that was really funny that these two movies were written, partly at least, by the same person, because they did kind of feel the same, but she is very good at writing rom-coms. When Harry met Sally is really, really good, probably one of my favorite rom-coms. This one was also is also rivaling it. They are both cheese fest. They are both funny. I thought they were both very funny. They were both great. The script, I thought, in this movie was really, really good. Obviously, if you're going to pick apart the movie, Annie was definitely stalking, and it was kind of, it would have been creepy. Like, any, I feel like if that happened in real life, I don't think it would work very well, The Annie's tactic. I think it would be just seen as creepy, like, you flew all the way to see me, and then you didn't talk to me. You went to my door, you stalked me all day, and then you flew home. <laughs> like, that's kind of creepy, so... That was definitely something that I was thinking about during the movie, like, oh, I, if this happened to me, I probably wouldn't do it. But obviously, it's a movie. I put that aside. You want these characters to get together because you know they're destined for each other. And destiny is one of the big things that was part of this movie. Destiny was a big topic of this movie. Destiny and signs and is it your destiny to find the right person and stuff. And what I kind of took out of this movie is that there is always someone in your life who will be destined for you, but you cannot just be sitting there and wait for that to happen. You have to kind of make the most of what you got and you have to uh, kind of go for it, you know? Like if you can just sit in your chair all day and wait for destiny to happen, destiny isn't going to happen. You have to kind of control it a little bit. Even if it is your destiny to eventually end up with that person, it was seen here like Annie and Sam, they were destined to be together, right? They're destined to be together. Everyone knew they were gonna get together at the end of the movie, even though it was, 
still I'm very emotional even though it was like from the very start of the movie like Annie and Sam are going to get together in the movie there's no way they don't but it was their destiny but that doesn't mean that they just sat there and somehow they got together no Annie did like research on him and then stalked him and stuff and then he had to fly to New York and they had to do all these things to get together so it was kind of like a mix of destiny but it's also kind of destiny is in your hands sort of thing which is I really really enjoy because I don't really like the idea of there's just one destiny and you don't have any control over it I like that this movie to me at least the message was that you have control of your destiny in a way like even if these two people are destined to see each other you may never see each other or if you're perfect for each other you may never see each other unless you control your own destiny you know you actually try and go out you try and do things which I was really good I also really enjoyed the kind of getting over a significant other I thought it was really um interesting that they brought up like oh you'll just get over her in like a couple of months and you start dating because I don't think that is the case and I think the movie definitely went the same way that I think whereas like you're not going to get over this person you just have to learn how to cope with with the loss and then you have to learn how to cope moving on and I think this movie did that really well with Tom Hanks character with Sam uh, just how he the steps the progressions he made to start moving on from his significant other's death and that doesn't mean that he's forgetting about her it doesn't mean that he's never gonna love her or stop loving her it just means that he's moving on he's learning to cope with the pain and like he said learning how to get up and out of bed every morning without thinking about it learning how to breathe every morning without thinking about it and then learning how to like stop feeling the pain or stop noticing the pain at least so that was something that I really really enjoyed I really liked that message of the movie and yeah I just thought that was really really good getting into the cast now the cast of this movie was very very fun they were very good at delivering the cheesy lines they were very good at delivering the funny lines I thought there were a lot of great lines in the movie actually before we get into the cast I would just like to say that the one of the downfalls of this movie was definitely kind of the gender norms that it was displaying how like men cannot get into this these types of movies and women won't be able to get into the I think it was the dirty dozen types of movies like those sort of things I was like this kind of dates the movie in a way because movies nowadays are probably more open to that genre maybe they'll make a little joke here or there but it was that joke was used quite a bit in that movie so I thought that that dated the movie a little bit but that was kind of the only big fault I saw and obviously that Annie was stalking Sam which would be very very creepy <laughs> but besides that I, I thought this movie was amazing Anyways, getting into the cast now, the cast, Tom Hanks goes first because I wanted to watch Tom Hanks movie and this was a Tom Hanks movie. So Tom Hanks goes first as Sam Baldwin. I thought he was great. He was emotional before I even knew his character. He was having me tear up at the very start when he was at the cemetery with Joe, jo I almost said Joanne, with Jonah. And he just has like those four lines or something that he says and then the camera slowly pans up and over to the Chicago or slowly lifts up. and. I was like, okay, I'm gonna like this movie. Tom Hanks killed it in this role. He felt kind of in between comedy and drama, and I feel like this may have been sort of when he started to turn into a dramatic actor because he was very good at delivering the comedic lines, but he was also very good at the drama. So I feel like this was sort of an in-between movie for him because I don't think he does a lot of comedy anymore, but I'm pretty sure he did a lot of comedy before. So I feel like this movie is right in the middle of his career in a way between comedy and jo and uh, drama, but I thought he did a really fantastic job. He seemed like a very lovable guy in this movie, a very lovable dad, and you just kind of were rooting for him to find Annie the whole movie, and I just thought he did a great job with everything, including like his dramatic scenes were exceptional. Just I don't know what it is about Tom Hanks, but whenever he starts talking and it's like a sad moment at all, you just want to cry. I don't know why. Meg Ryan as Annie Reed. Meg Ryan was fantastic in this movie. Obviously her character there was like, okay, you're kind of stalking, you're kind of stalking Sam. But if you take that aside, I thought she was very, very good. She was super funny. She was very charismatic and she was very energetic. And obviously uh, when she was with Walter, who was played by Bill Pullman, uh, you didn't really want them to be together because Walter was very much a kind of low energy type of person 
a boring person, I guess, but not boring person. People of low energy are not boring at all. So, like they're so fun to hang out with because then they just sit there and you're like, yeah, let's just sit here all day. But anyways, Annie Reed was definitely not a low energy person. She was very high energy, and I really liked what they did with her character, where she would do something, and then Tom Hanks's character would do something or say something that his old wife would do this, but Meg Ryan's character Annie had just done that in the previous scene. I don't know. I just thought that was that was just very very fun. I loved her attraction and uh, affection towards this old movie that was playing. I totally forget what the name of the movie was, but I love that that kept coming up and that the movie itself, Sleepless in Seattle, kept paralleling sort of in a way that movie with like the taxi cab and like the hand holding and saying hello and stuff like that. I thought that was brilliant, especially the ending when Tom Hanks's Sam holds out his hand and Annie reaches for the hand and that was like what her mother said I'm pretty sure at the start of the movie I'm not too sure but I think that's what happened I don't know it was a really nice end to the movie I really really enjoyed it finally we are going to talk about Ross Malinger I think that's how you say his last name it could be Malinger but I think it's Malinger as Jonah he was so much fun he was kind of really rude Victoria did not deserve any of his sass and any of his menace behavior because Victoria was actually really nice. Yes, her laugh sounded like a hyena, and she laughed way too often. Tom Hanks could be like, I'm putting on my shoes, and she'd be like, ha 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 ha, and it was really annoying. But she was also really nice. She was trying to be so nice to him, and she was being very nice to Sam. She was making dinner for them. She was hanging out with them. I thought she was actually kind of a really good girlfriend. So Jonah was being really mean to her, and while sometimes it was funny, like when he called her a hoe behind her back, I was like, that is a good line. That is a good line. I thought he was kind of a bully, and he was kind of annoying, but he was still amazing. I don't know if you understand if that makes sense, but that is how I feel about him. Anyways, that is my reaction to Sleepless in Seattle. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed my reaction, and thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. And yeah, um, yeah, I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction.